Good afternoon and welcome to the Multicultural Health Communication um, Service um, hosting the Multicultural Media Online Conference. And this is hosted by the Ministry of Health, the Multicultural Health Communication Service and Multicultural New South Wales. I am your moderator, Jasusa Halaratna, Deputy Director of the MHCS Service. And today we are so glad that you've joined us. And it's been a fortnight since we had this forum and we have with us today, we're really honored to have joining us to answer your call, uh, questions on COVID-19, monkeypox and other public health matters, Dr. Jeremy McAnulty, Executive Director of the Health Protection New South Wales. Hello, Dr. McAnulty, how are you? Thank you very much. Thanks again for joining us. And also with us in studio, we are so pleased to welcome the New South Wales Chief Psychiatrist, Dr. Murray Wright. He was with us last year and he's here again this year to talk about the key messages of Mental Health Month. Dr. Murray, um, how are you today? Well, thanks. Thanks, thanks for so having much me. for having um, the time to come with us today. We would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and the custodians of the land from which we are all meeting from today. For us here in studio, we pay respect to the Camaragal people of the Eora Nation. We also pay respect to Albino colleagues and elders, and we acknowledge the elders and leaders of multicultural communities represented in this session today. My colleagues from the New South Wales Multicultural Health Communication Service will be adding links on the chat on resources and information available in languages for you to use in your publications and to share with your networks. And Dr. Jeremy McAnulty and Dr. Mari Wright will do their best to answer all your questions today. We have 30 minutes, so please keep your microphones on mute. As always, we thank you for doing that. And please ask your questions and add your comments on the chat. We'll jump in to our Q&A now. Dr. McAnulty, can you please advise what's the latest advice in COVID-19? And, you know, last week there was a change in isolation. What does this mean to yeah, the so, community? Um, th yeah, so um, COVID is still around, but the we're moving out from the emergency response to COVID to a more living with COVID um, way of life. Now, COVID is still a dangerous virus. It can um, cause serious disease in some people. So we still need to do those things to keep each other safe, like if you're sick, stay at home until your symptoms resolve, get a test, uh, a rat test, uh, or if, you, if you're particularly for at risk of severe disease, um, uh, a PCR test. Now, it's good to have a plan with your GP, particularly if you're at risk of severe disease, about what to do should you get symptoms of that might be COVID or influenza, respiratory symptoms, um, to know what sort of tests you should do. And if you're vulnerable to severe disease because you've got chronic underlying disease or because you're elderly, have no to what to do by pre-planning with your doctor. So protect others by, so even though the laws have changed so that you're no longer required to isolate, we still need to look after each other. So what we recommend is you do what, you know, you generally do. Uh, if you're sick, stay at home until you're better. Um, if you do test positive for COVID, we recommend you stay at home for at least five days uh, and that your symptoms have gone. If you work in high-risk settings, to stay away for seven days uh, and talk to your employer uh, before going back to work so that you know, they can do things to make sure that other people are safe because you can be infectious for up, for ten, up to 10 days. Um, and, and while you don't no longer have to register your RAT on the Surface New South Wales website, we still recommend you do it because that's a way of getting plugged into the health system and, and and being able to access advice and and antivirals don't forget to get vaccinated keep up to date with all your vaccines so keep an eye on the web page or in the news about when uh how that might change into the future um and if you're a, a family member has developed covid then you're still at risk of getting infection so take those extra precautions, watch out for symptoms. If you get any symptoms, get a test right away and, um, and, uh, and uh, you know, keep, keep away from other people um, uh, or wear a mask if you're, if you're, so you're not spreading it to other people. Um, so sensible things, the kind of the lessons we learned during COVID, they're just no longer mandatory anymore. So we need to look after ourselves. Thank you, Dr. Uh, McAnulty. Dr. Murray, it's it's so nice to have you here. Um, 
these are messages that we continue to hear. It's been um, several years now. One of the key messages for Mental Health Month, and I think it's still the same tips as we would have um, to, to keep ourselves safe. Yes, well, it's Mental Health Month. And um, one of the things that I think is important about Mental Health Month is that we use the time to reflect on our own mental health and on the health of people around us. Um, one of the things that the pandemic has done is it's been incredibly disruptive and stressful for all of us. And that stress has um, disrupted um, our daily routines, um, in some cases, our livelihoods, our education and our social activities. Now, for some people, that's carried on into creating some psychological difficulties. And so now when we're starting to resume some of our normal activities, um, it's actually difficult for some people to simply jump back in to where they left off. And this is particularly true for children, young people and other vulnerable individuals. And so during Mental Health Month, it's a good time for everybody, both for themselves and for the people around them, to, to give some thought to what do they understand about the things that make them healthy, uh, mentally healthy in particular, and what are the things that um, prove challenging for them, and how are they tracking post-pandemic with picking up all those healthy activities, because it's been problematic for all of us. Um, and if you're part of a family, it's, it's good to make that conversation um, part of the family life. Um, what, are the, what are the activities that we're picking up on? Some of those are easy, some of those are difficult. Reconnecting with old friends, reconnecting with hobbies or interests. Um, many of us take those things for granted, but for some people that's actually quite challenging and they need encouragement and support and checking in on those sorts of things because that's what makes a difference to people's mental health in the longer term. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Murray. And it, it's really important um, to understand that there are services available as well to, to reach out for people. Um, we know that for um, people from multicultural backgrounds, there are services like transcultural mental health. That's true. Um, and, and so there, and, and I think over the last um, couple of years, I think there's been increased efforts to, um, to really appreciate that if you have um, access to services which are culturally familiar um, and in a language which is easily accessible, then you're more likely to be able to make good use of them. Um, and, and as a result of that, I think the, um, the Transcultural Mental Health Service, um, which is known to some people, um, has actually introduced a Transcultural Mental Health line, um, which is, I, I, I believe, is starting up um, imminently, um, is staffed Monday to Friday, um, um, office hours. And it's really there so that people can um, have, have uh, access information which is relevant to their culture and their language um, and, 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 and um, connect up with the services which are out there but are sometimes quite hard to put your finger on. Thank you, Doctor. Um, Dr. Jeremy, there's so many messages that's coming out and we've talked about this. There's also monkeypox, there's JEV, which we'll chat about. Um, the advice from New South Wales Health in, in making sure that we, we keep up to date, especially with vaccination, is still key. Yeah, look, vaccines are one of the gifts that we've had for now a century, I think, around or more, uh, uh, and longer, in fact, um, 200 years for some vaccines. And they're just a gift to the to health. You know, if, if you talk to people who grew up in the pre-vaccine era, they saw little children dying and po people paralysed from polio and things we just don't see in, in such numbers anymore. Um, and so um, in, a, in a sense, uh, because we've got high rates of vaccine in, vaccinations in New South Wales and the rest of Australia, um, you know, the, it's not so much in everyone's mind about the diseases we're trying to prevent. So yes, it's important that we maintain that high level of prevention and, and, and good health amongst our children. We've got very high uh, uh, long life expectancies these days and thanks be, because of our health system, but also because of these vaccines that are, have gotten rid of a lot of diseases that we just don't see much anymore. But we need to maintain that. One of the things about the pandemic is that people didn't travel. However, um, around the world, there was less vaccination occurring because people were unable to access vaccines as much as they could before. So in fact, as people travel more now, so the world has opened up, fewer people actually have got vaccinated in some parts of the world. So 
there may be an increased risk. So it behoves us all to make sure that we and our children are up to date with all our vaccines. You can check on the, um, the vaccination website, the national government runs, um, and also through your local doctor, just make sure you and your children are up to date. And um, speaking of vaccines, there's a new monkeypox vaccine that is available for those who are eligible. Yeah, and look, most people won't be at risk for, for monkeypox at the moment. It's, it's uh, The people who are at risk for monkeypox uh, internationally have been uh, men who have sex with men. Uh, and so we've rolled out a program since uh, uh, August uh, to uh, offer vaccination uh, to uh, high-risk men who have sex with men who might come down with monkeypox. Now, monkeypox has been a, an epidemic around the world uh, since around May, I think, this year. And we've seen around, I think it's 44 cases in New South Wales, mostly in people who've come from overseas where they've acquired the infection and come back home or been travelling in Australia. But there's been a small number who've acquired locally. So it, it's a well, while most people recover pretty well after a few weeks, it's an unpleasant disease. Can You might need hospitalisation because of pain, so it's best prevented. Vaccines are an important part of that prevention, but also you know, um, sexual practices that are safe. And um, if you have any symptoms, symptoms at all, not exposing other people. Um, we're continuing to roll out that vaccine. Uh, so keep an eye um, you know, on the websites and in the media about uh, access but if you're at risk because you're a gay man you can log on to the website and make a booking uh, to get monkeypox vaccine. Thank you uh, Dr Jeremy and then for advice on how to stay safe and prevent monkeypox infection please visit the ACONS website and the New South Wales Health Monkeypox Information Hub um, so that's really key. Um, Dr Wright, um, Dr Murray one of the things that um, we've been hearing is about um, all these information um, that's come through from the Ministry of Health, from everywhere else, and especially the youth, the young people have been affected. Mm -hmm. And we have um, engaged with young um, people, um, and we call them COVID-19 Youth Ambassadors. And one of the things, well, there's a video that was um, done by Jocelyn, and she talked about how she was quite affected by all the news that she was hearing about COVID. So let's watch this. I found it hard to believe this was reality. Breakfast, press conference on Facebook. Lunchtime, COVID memes on TikTok. Dinner time, COVID this, COVID that. My well-being was being affected by everything going on around me. So I took action to put myself first. I checked social media less. I set boundaries for conversations. I found hobbies to distract myself. How do you put yourself first? That was really a good tip to to stay away from when it's time to stay away when it gets affected. What are you, what are the other tips? Yeah, well, I think that's an excellent video because it uh, and it doesn't just apply during the pandemic, mm -hmm. but we we see this when there's other natural disasters like bushfires and floods where we get saturation coverage in the media, um, and it's and people are drawn towards watching it, um, but it's not healthy. It's just not healthy, and particularly for younger people. Um, so I'm talking about um, primary school age children. It's really important um, for for, uh, for parents and responsible adults to monitor the um, the amount of um, exposure to the media, um, and to preferably sit with the the young person and listen to what's what what's being shown, and then make it a subject of discussion. Because it's very easy to, um, even though um, most of what's on the media is factually accurate, it isn't always, um, but it's easier for, for young people to distort the message and to misunderstand what's being said. Um, so I really like the message there, which is turn it off. Um, don't don't over-engage in, in media, full stop. Um, and the other message there is, is that it's sometimes not that easy to just say, stop doing it it's important to do something else mm -hmm. so find another activity which is distracting uh, more healthy um, and spend time with other people for parents in particular i think that making it an overt subject of discussion 
and 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 so we all know when when the headlines are being swamped with distressing news um and i think it's a, a healthy habit is for the uh, is for at the dinner table or at some other setting is to make it a regular point of discussion and so you can put context around it um, because that that's what's often lacking for for, for young people um, and also to to be really quite encouraging of some of the healthy things which that video talked about um, reach out to friends connect up with people talk talk to them go on an outing um, get some exercise those are they sound simple um, but when people are overwhelmed by these really quite distressing messages um, they can they can lose perspective and they can um, lose motivation to do those things thank you um, dr marion i guess um uh, dr jeremy one of the things that we've faced is that um the news coming from and the challenges we've faced as in, in ministry of health and, and communications is when we there's also news from overseas that are incorrect and and, and inaccurate yeah, and so I think, as, as Murray says, it's important that we put everything in context and, um, and, and there's been so much misinformation that's uh, come through, you know, unauthorised websites or, you know, rumours and so on. So it's important to check on the, with authoritative sites, New South Wales Health, of course, mm -hmm. um, the national websites and, and government websites you can trust. Um, but, uh, you know, if something sounds weird, check the facts um, before assuming it might be true. Yeah. And um, Murray, you, you, you also mentioned about not just COVID, but also the, um, the natural disasters and, and um, there's the flooding where um, could result to Japanese encephalitis and mosquito bites. And these are the things that we're also trying to uh, relate the messages about. Yeah. Um, so, um, look, um, we, we've seen a, a, a change in, in some of the disease patterns in, in the recent years, you know, COVID, of course, and, and more recently we've had um, monkeypox, I mentioned, and Japanese encephalitis, uh, as well as all the you know, flooding and, and so on. So it, it can be quite distressing. Uh, just in terms of Japanese encephalitis, it's, it's not a huge risk, uh, but it's a new disease we've seen uh, that's mosquito-borne, spread by mosquitoes, particularly in West in parts of New South Wales, but most people get infected by a mosquito bite, um, never get any symptoms. But the trouble is um, maybe one in 200 of people who do get infected can get a nasty infection with uh, encephalitis, which is a neurological illness and fevers. Um, so we are rolling out a vaccine for people in those higher risk areas, particularly in some parts along the, the Murray and Riverina uh, areas and Western New South Wales. Um, but the important thing is to remember Japanese encephalitis is one of several infections that mosquitoes can carry in New South Wales. So we should all routinely make sure we put on repellent for, of, to avoid mosquito bites, wear long sleeves, long pants when we're out and about, particularly when mosquitoes are biting and, and do simple things to check your house is safe. So, you know, fly screens on your windows and doors that are, don't have holes in them, um, that you don't have pools of water lying around your house, which is hard when it's flooding, but, um, you know, uh, empty pot plants and other things that might contain water that uh, mosquitoes can can breed in. So those simple things, we, we don't need to worry excessively about it, but just, um, you know, check off all this of things that you do to avoid getting bitten and that'll um, save you getting some of the infections uh, but this new uh, um, Japanese encephalitis uh, is a risk in some parts of the state and we've got a vaccine uh, program for that um, but again check for details because it's eligible free so it's free for some people over 50 in in some LGAs who spend uh, those people over 50 who spend a fair bit of time outside check the website for the details and talk to your GP if you fit the bill. Thank you, um, Dr. Jeremy. Dr. Murray, one of the things that um, has um, impacted people, as I said, there's these new um, uh, information, there's flooding, there's um, uh, new diseases. How do you stay calm? What are those exercise or tools that you can do to, to just not get too worried? Well, I think the, the the first step is to understand yourself, um, and and that we've had we've all had the opportunity during the pandemic when we've been stressed um, to understand how we deal with that sort of stress, um, and. The, the stress affects us in terms of our levels of energy, our ability to concentrate, um, our, our um, sleep, 
um, our exercise and our de degree of sociability with other people. Um, and so we all have, when, when we're stressed, we all respond, change in subtly in those things. Um, so the first step is to be able to pick the early warning signs for yourself about when you're um, actually struggling with some kind of stressful issue in your life. Um, and then to a to um, develop some strategies to address that. Now, some of those strategies are really quite simple and straightforward. Um, and, and I think, again, the video you showed is a good example. Distract yourself with an enjoyable activity um, because it's much easier to do that than it is to convince yourself to stop thinking about something which is troubling you. Um, then, then there are things like monitoring the amount of sleep you get, your diet, how much alcohol you're consuming, because these things all change. Um, um, and the other thing is that it's important for you to keep an eye on, um, on people who are close to you, because sometimes um, you, know, you might be able to see earlier um, earlier warning signs than the person who's actually experiencing them and giving them advice and support in either um, changing the way they're dealing with things, um, addressing some of, the, some of the issues, or indeed getting some help. Um, one of the things I would say about um, the impact of stress is that for quite often it does drain people's energy and their motivation. And one of the hallmarks is that people feel overwhelmed and a little bit hopeless. And that hopelessness can, ex can extend to person's perception of how valuable um, either getting help or doing some of these other things is. And so it's really important for the people around to, to be really encouraging, optimistic, um, supportive, and sort of gently, but can, kind of consistently um, um, sort of direct the person to the fact that there are simple, accessible solutions to their problems um, and encouraging them to access them. And Murray, there are exercises that we recently launched with um, Minister um, Taylor, and these are mindfulness resources and exercises in language that help support people to, to just um, um, use them in their daily life. How important are these exercises? Well, mindfulness is a is a really good example of a quite accessible and easy to learn strategy for managing stress and anxiety. Um, it's been around for quite a while, um, and it's and it's something which, with a, with a little bit of um, attention, a person can can develop up the skills. Um, it's obviously important um, that um, tools like this are firstly accessible, um, and so they, they they can actually be learned. Um, um, off um, the internet, um, but also accessible in terms of language. Um, and, and so the development of these sorts of tools um, in, an, in a variety of languages, I think is a really significant breakthrough in terms of people who have that extra level of vulnerability. Thank you, um, Dr. Murray. And um, our colleagues from the Multicultural Health Communication Service have been putting um, those links onto the website, uh, onto the chat. And if you have any questions, please let us know. Or um, if you, after the session, you have any more questions, we'll ask them for um, Dr. Murray as well, and he can ask them later on. But um, Jeremy, we've had, as you know, being in New South Wales Health, these are tips and these are important for us to apply as well, and also for the media. Yeah, look, uh, um, for the last two or three years, I think uh, all health workers across the state have been uh, working extraordinarily <laughs> hard as, as as many other industries. And uh, so it's important for all of us as health workers to take, I love listening to Murray's advice because I uh, take it very seriously. And they're great tips to, mm. that we all can use. And, uh, and as you said, they're, they're nice and simple and often common sense, but just remembering what to do is really important. Yeah, and I think one of the questions that's come up is, you know, during last year and, and when the, the lockdown happened, um, there a, a lot of young people and, and people from all ages had to be disconnected and then they had to connect again. But a lot of people, sometimes more, more so the young people, apparently they have harder time connecting after being disconnected. Well, that's quite understandable when you think about it, because um, young people um, are not on a sort of a stable life trajectory. Things are changing all, all the time. And so um, and so um, missing out on six months of um, normal activities um, for someone at my stage of life is frustrating and stressful. Um, but 
but I pretty much pick up where I left off. Um, for someone who's school age or university or about to enter a career for the first time, um, that six months is devastating. Um, and, and, and so it's not a simply a matter of picking up where you left off. It's, it's, it's actually making amends for all the things that you've missed out on. Um, and I think that's a really challenging um, experience. Also, we know that for young people, that kind of social interaction and connectedness and developing up those relationships is a very, very dynamic um, process. And so it's changing all the time. And so you, you can't just simply stop it for a period of time and expect it to easily um, start again. And so, so I think that for young people, they need they need um, to be more attentive to the to to trying to identify and picking up the threads, um, but they also need to um, reach out and get some help. We we understand this. And so in, in New South Wales Health, we have actually invested in additional resources um, to help particularly young people who are under stress. And it's important if you are a young person or if you know a young person to, um, to um, help direct them towards those range of services which are there to assist. What about parents? What can parents do when they see this with their kids? Yeah, it's, look, that's a really good question because I think um, most parents, um, uh, you know, are concerned or worried about their kids a lot of the time, and 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 so I think that the one of the challenges is knowing if what your child is going through is the same as all their all their peers and their cohort are going through, or whether this is an exceptionally difficult situation and needs special attention. Um, I think for those. Um, um, children who are still at school, um, school's a good point of reference. Um, they can they can help to um, um, give advice to parents about whether whether or not what their child is going through is something which is which is being experienced across that whole age range, um, or whether um, their their child is struggling more than others. And in which case, they can help direct them towards services. I think within the family, as I mentioned before, I think the conversations that can happen in the family are really powerful and can make a huge difference. Um, and the other, so so that that kind of um, regular making of time to reflect on what's happening in the world and how and 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 also what's happening in in an individual's particular part of the world and how they're grappling with it, I think is important. Um, Normalising the fact that this has been a struggle, um, so making that not. Is, this is not an exceptional thing. It's a struggle, and it's a struggle getting back into face-to-face -face education when you've been doing everything online, um, and connecting back up with your school friends and and your social network. That doesn't always go smoothly, and and being understanding of that and helping to problem solve. I think it's also important uh, for parents to model what what a good um, return to normal life is, um, and so and so um, kids. We'll listen a lot to what we say, but they'll watch what we're doing even more closely. Um, and it's really important if you if you believe that reconnecting up with your normal activities and your normal network is important, um, that you don't just tell your children that's important, but you, that you do it yourself, um, that you also model healthy behaviours um, and, um, and, um, and 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 activities and, um, and keep an eye on those those other things such as diet, alcohol, rest. Um, and a, work, and a good work-life balance. Thank you, uh, Dr. Murray. And um, Dr. Jeremy, just exactly what Dr. Uh, Murray is saying is that just being informed of what the rules are and being up to date with the, the vaccination and just um, the isolation rules, are there are changes and announcements, isn't it? Yeah, and, and we have to recognise that in the last two or three years during the pandemic, there are lots of changes and lots of rules. And now we're in a situation where I think that's changing so it's it's less less often changing we now have uh, eliminated most public health rules and we're back to you know how we deal with infections in the past you know those 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 you know common sense things about staying at home when you're sick getting a test um washing your hands um trying to avoid infecting other people if you've got symptoms um you know that's Get those back into the normal way of doing things and and not stress so much about it and realize that if, if we're vaccinated and do those other things that uh, will keep each other safe thank you and we've run out of time but um i'll start with you um dr jeremy 
there are festivals happening. It is um, a celebration of Diwali for some communities and other festivals that um, are coming up and in the next of months. What are your um, what are your messages or key tips for everyone to to remember um, to close our our um, session today? Because we'll enjoy them. <laughs> and uh, secondly, yeah, remember to keep others safe. So if you do have symptoms, you know, don't go along to crowds. Um, uh, so no, you can go out and get uh, essentials and things. Uh, wear a mask if you do that. Uh, and um, yeah, just just be cautious and above all, get vaccinated if you haven't. You're not up to date with your vaccines. Any message for the multicultural media to share with their communities? Um, yeah, again, enjoy. Um, yeah, um, check on the latest information on the website um, and uh, um, yeah, follow those simple rules. I think. Thank you, um, Dr. Jeremy and Dr. Mary Wright. Thank you so much for joining us. Any last tips and messages for our uh, multicultural media and our community joining us today? Well, I think it's the, the, the simple message, which is that we've learned a lot about ourselves through the pandemic and how we respond um, to some of the stress and privations we've experienced. Don't waste that. Um, I think it's important we, we, that, that we use that information and that knowledge um, to be able to navigate some of the challenges that might come up in the rest of our lives. It, it is actually a really useful um, um, learning experience um, and, and, and the important thing is to make the best use of that. Thank you so much. And um, we've had Dr. Jeremy McAnulty and Dr. Murray Wright joining us today. It's been a pleasure. And we'll see you again the next fortnight for our next session. Please, same time, same Zoom link. And um, please let us know if you have any other health topics that you'd like us to, to focus on. And um, the recording of this session will be available on the New South Wales Multicultural Health Communication Service website and also on our social media platforms. Please stay safe, take care, and we'll see you again next time.